internet. Today we're going to be talking about the psychogenesis of heterosexuality, homosexuality and bisexuality. Uh, so before we start, I just want to say that I'm going to be analyzing them in a psychoanalytic perspective. However, it's not to exclude other dimensions, be it biological, social, cultural, um, neurological, that can and do absolutely come into play, but I'm not going to be focusing on that today. I'm really going to be focusing on the psychological element of sexual orientation and on the genesis, i.e. the starting point of this perspective. So here I'm going to be referring to this psychogenesis with three aspects. Identification, love and desire, i.e. attraction. So let's start with heterosexuality as it's one of those um, facets that is, I think, the best understood by psychoanalysis as psychoanalysis virtually started with heterosexuality as its core sets of theories. So in heterosexuality, we have male heterosexuality and female heterosexuality. Let's start with male. So young men, fundamentally young when their children have as a love object the person that they love is their mother. So they tend to really be close to mother. It's only through what is called the Oedipus complex that the father comes into the picture and becomes a source of identification, i.e. the child is going to identify to their father, the male child is going to identify to their, to their father, look up to him, become uh, admirative of who they are and become envious also that the father is able to have such an intimate relationship with their mother. So unconsciously they identify on a certain level to their father and the, the love choice of their father. And fundamentally it becomes uh, a, such an ingrained identification in who they are to the father figure that they're going to also reinforce their love for the mother, but their love in a desirable way, i.e. they're going to desire women, as the father also himself desires mother, and by extension, at least in theory, a whole plethora of other women. Thus, the child can then, he can then keep his love for his mother, but also identify with the father. He's also, in classic theory, pushed away from by his relationship with mother, by his father. The father is in the Oedipus complex, basically cuts off the tie saying, no, you can't have mum. Mum is beyond limits. She's with me. So the child has to separate the male child and go and explore other points in his life, grow, develop, and then find his partner in the outside world, right? So with the male child, there's this identification with the father. There is... They keep the love object of the mother in, inside of themselves and they're attracted to women. That attraction is also based on all the good experiences that they've experienced with mother, but also the sexual components that they experienced during their development. Because there is a lot of excitement that can happen during those moments. So fundamentally, there is this desire to one day get a mother. And that's also why, why a lot of men also treat their spouses like their mothers. It's because there is an unconscious will to go back to that first relationship, which was very gratifying, very loving, very caring. Now let's move on to the female heterosexuality, which is a much more... Um, complicated and it caused a lot of discussion in psychoanalysis but the main theory is that fundamentally female women are very I still have the first primary care love object is the mother um, they still love their mothers but they're gonna understand very quickly that mother that isn't everything that she loves dad right so they're going to start identifying with mother that she loves dad. But also, mother doesn't have everything. Uh, especially in older generations, women were 
dependent on their husbands and that's something that Cho picked up upon very quickly and that there was something desirable in dad or father and fundamentally that desirableness is something that the girl is going to start to think about and when she discovers that there is a biological difference i.e. that men have a penis and women have a clitoris and a vagina she's going to start thinking that that's exactly what she misses at least in classic fairy the girl thinks that she's missing a penis and that fundamentally she can gain it by being with a man so for Freud and that's his fairy so it's primal fairy in psychoanalysis is that the young girl is going to think to herself if I become like mother then I'll be able to get what mother had i.e. by extension the love of father his reproductive organs and babies and very quickly young girls are, are going to want babies um, and a bit like the, the boy it's up to the father and also the mother to say no 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 this is not possible you can't get this directly you have to develop become an adult start building your own relationships you can't stay within the range of the family that is the forbidden of incest which is very important and completely and utterly essential in object choice i.e. in sexual orientation and what is going to become of the future of the individual so what happens in this case is that the girl's going to detach from mother she's going to seek um, a man to be able to feel complete, at least in Freudian theory. Now, what you have to understand is that in this set of fairies, the girl has identified with mother, but she desires father, and she loves both of them, as for the, as for the son. That's exactly what's going to happen in bisexuality, as bisexuality is I don't think it's something that's added, I just think that it's something that's more flexible, i.e. that the conscious mind has integrated more choices than heterosexuality or homosexuality. As fundamentally, in psychoanalytic theory, everyone is bisexual on an unconscious level. But because of our conscious minds, we choose, I choose being a bad word, it's always been a bad word, it will always be a bad word in terms of sexual orientation, but there is a path that is taken, that's the best way to summarize it, that path taken consciously uh, blocks out choices. However, in bisexuality, one can think that fundamentally in both genders or both sexes, all choices remain, i.e. they can love, desire and identify with both parents on an equal plane, that they don't have to select themselves in one choice or another, that the identification was fluid enough to allow for, to identify to the both positions, both as the father figure and the mother figure in both men and women. There's also a very interesting question of gender differences as basically bisexuality being something in which the individual has all choices virtually. They also have perhaps an identity that's more fluid in, in forms that perhaps heterosexuality or homosexuality don't, where it's more how can I say, clear and cut, whereas bisexuality might be more fluid. And please keep in mind this is a fairy, I'm not saying this is truth, right? But this very interesting idea is that in the bisexual perspective, both elements of masculine and feminine are kept on an equal playing field and that identification to both parties is good enough to be able to sustain desire for both. At least that's what we can conceive of it in with the classic psychoanalytic lens. Now let us move to homosexuality. First we're going to start with male homosexuality. I think it's a very diverse uh, sp spectrum and I, I don't want to, how can I say, oversimplify things. So please keep in mind that what I'm saying is an overview. It's not like an absolute detailed uh, phenomena. But I think there is many scenarios, but I'm going to talk about two very really specific scenarios. In the homosexual uh, man, there is an ident there can be an identification to mother. Instead of 
identifying with father. They're going to stay with mother. They're not going to push out that, but they're overly going to emphasize their relationship with mother. She's going to become the role, the primary role model. And as such, they're going to identify with her. But they're also going to start desiring what she desires, i.e. men. And therefore, they're going to feel more comfortable in the idea of desiring men than women. As, for example, the fact that they have identified with her, and keep in mind there's nothing wrong with that, they've just identified with her on an unconscious level, therefore they're going to not be attracted to the woman's, um, how can I say, physical attributes, but towards male attributes. Freud called this uh, attraction to uh, obje uh, narcissistic object choice, i.e. that fundamentally what the homosexual man is identifying with is with the fact of receiving what he received within the other, i.e. that the other is like a mirror of who he once was. And I don't think it's impossible, but I don't think it's quite accurate. I also think that fundamentally what is very primal is the fact that they have identified with mother herself. And once that they have identified with her, they can identify the other as father, but also as a part of themselves. So I think that both can be true at the same time. That's the beauty of the unconscious mind, is that it's fluid and it's non-contradictory. Um, so in this case, in the first case, a homosexual men have identified with mother. But there's a second case, which is also very interesting, that at least I have clinically seen, is that homosexual men might very well identify to father, but not necessarily desire mother. Perhaps because there is no, there's nothing that they feel on an unconscious level to be gained, or perhaps because the identification with father was so complete that there is no need for the feminine in their minds. There's no, they're only completed by the relationship with man and masculinity becomes the center stage, which is very interesting as fundamentally, they, they, in a way, and I'm, please keep in mind it's an unconscious way, they're not consciously doing that, but there is, might be a discarding of a female sexuality. We can also think that perhaps the fear of castration might also be, play a role in the fact that women are lacking something, therefore they might be they might be afraid. And if we go back to Freud's first con conceptualization, there might be a fear of castration if you went towards women, that the Oedipus complex was perhaps too too potent, too strong, that yeah, you can't have mother, or you can't have any woman, you can only have men. And please keep in mind, this is only a hypothesis, right? So fundamentally, now that we have explored uh, male homosexuality, we can move on to female homosexuality. So in this case, very interestingly enough, the same type of rules can apply. They can identify with father to the point where fundamentally they're no longer attracted to masculinity because they themselves have internalized the masculine elements of themselves and of father. Therefore, they don't need any more, the, um, or they're not attracted or they don't desire the men, but however they do desire women, because in a way that's identification, that deep identification toward, towards father or dad has created um, um, a lack in the female figure, which they can try and grasp by having relationships with women. Uh, that relationship with women is in a way of staying in the lineage of father, as he desires women, they desire women. But there's also this idea that perhaps they have overly identified with mother and that they start to really truly love the female elements, perhaps completely fooling themselves with this idea of being completely in the feminine, not needing the masculine. And this would be very interesting as it would completely contradict Freud's hypothesis of the um, woman looking for the penis or having penis envy as it would be completely okay with just being with women, i.e. that they, there is no need for the penis. Perhaps they themselves feel that they have in a way let go of penis envy. Perhaps women who, ha who are lesbians 
feel that there is no need for the penis in the relationship, that it's superfluous, which would be a very inter interesting hypothesis. We could also say that perhaps they themselves feel that they are masculine, therefore they, in a psychological way, possess the phallus, the, um, the organ, because they themselves identify with it. Therefore, they, an extra uh, phallus would be superflu superfluous, would be completely un unnecessary. And that would be a very interesting idea or hypothesis. But see, the very interesting point of all of this is that in psychoanalysis, our sexualities are not predetermined. They're not some biological constraints. They're much deeper than that. They ingrained with our experiences, with our forms of love, identification towards others, our desires, our excitement. And all of this is shaped by our very, very early paths in lives. Paths that we can't remember, but are still have an impact on us. That's so deep that it influences the whole of our lives. And that's what I love about psychoanalysis. That it's so rich, so complex, and there might not be any easy or complete answer. And yet, there are fairies that stimulate our intellectualness that we can think about since we can perceive sins. And of course here um, I use those three I basically I used fairy to explain those three forms of sexuality, but please keep in mind that it's so more so much more rich and vast and I'm not trying to box in the sexualities or to just trivialize them. On the contrary, I think that my explanation was woefully insufficient, but I still think it's quite interesting, and I want this to be more of an introduction to those ideas rather than just a stopping point for you. Of course, I know that this is going to be perhaps one of those controversial videos, but I stand by what I say, and that doesn't mean I'm right, but that means that that's at least what I can produce in terms of thinking. And I want you to feel free to comment, to disagree, to even put in your own hypotheses. And there's nothing wrong with them. So I just wanted to say that f please feel free. Whatever the case, whatever you think, whatever you feel, right? And that's pretty much it for this video. So please feel free to leave a comment if you want to, or please feel free to do what you, what you want intellectually with this video. I'll see you in the next one.